Hey everybody, Tom Joya from Visionary Music Group here. Gonna do another Anatomy of a Mix. This time I'm lucky to bring you a cover song of a George Duke classic called Feel by the Sahara Club. Michael Thompson, legendary studio guitar player, worked for Babyface, David Foster, you name it. Check him out in all music. He has thousands of record credits, great player. Virtuoso bassist, Stanley Clark. Virtuoso keyboard player, Jeff Lorber. Bunch of more great people involved in the project. I'll list all the credits in the comment section. Hope you enjoy it, so let's dig in. Okay, so this is a little different than some of the other mixes that I've done videos of because there was effects on certain tracks. So in this case, Michael, who was producer slash artist, lived with this for a few months, took time while he was overdubbing parts with other people to really get it together and get his balances right and get it exactly the way he wanted it. So my job was to come in, take that, and make it better. And not mess it up, hopefully. So anyway, here we go. I'm going to play you a little bit of his mix that he sent me, and then I will play you what I did. Jump up to some vocals. Life in me. Touch my mind. See what is in me. All right, cool. So now I'm going to play you our mix. Life in me. Cool, so my job was to take what was there, make it deeper, make it wider, make it bigger, make it louder, make it have a little more dance, a little more present. Let's talk an overview in this first video about how we did that. All right, so step one, I had to see where my starting point was going to be. So as I went down through these audio tracks, I'll give you a little overview. There was a bunch of automation things going on, some detailed work in there, as you can see. There were certain plugins that were already there, like for instance, uh, PSP Vintage Warmer, Decapitators. There was a bunch of things that sort of dialed in the sound the way they were hearing them. And try to figure out, you know, in steps how I can improve on it without hurting it. So the first thing I did was, I took the mix as it stood, and I went to my mix aux bus and ran everything through it. This did work in little bits, vertigo compressor. My stereo spreader helped a little bit, but as you can see, the Manly Massive Passive, I, I left off, it had too much shine. My Pro Q for some dipping, I didn't really need it. The limiter I had in just to make sure nothing bumped. And then my liaison, which is my outboard analog gear, I used, but I didn't use everything that I normally use. I just used the dangerous compressor and I use the dangerous back CQ for a little overall shine on the mix. So once we got to that point where I, I knew that, you know, he was digging it, then what I did was is I routed everything out to auxiliary submasters, which were routed to the submixer. I used my template and then I added some more. I dialed them out separately so there's like different guitar parts with different sounds. And then there was acoustic guitars, swells, keyboards and then there was a bunch of things like that so i separated everybody and i put them on their own aux submaster stem then i ran that out to my dangerous two bus lt summing mixers so i had 32 channels out which normals back to my burl bomber to print back into pro tools when i got to that point then i would play for him where i was and what usually happens when i go out to the summing mixer there's about 12 db more headroom thought I could just boost everything up. Then it created a little more dimension, a little more depth. So that was a check. They dug it. The two bus was cool. So then my next step was to just take all of my sidechain things and see what worked for them and what didn't. So I have my API 2500 that all the drums went to and basses. Then I have my 
my B bus, which is the sides, which is a Neve compressor and this widener, stereo spreader. And that's usually things that are ambient and go on the sides like pads and certain keyboards. And maybe the, the ambient guitars went to that. Then I had my C bus, which is my mid-range growl bus, which is an 1176 hitting pretty hard. Anything that needed a little more of that went there. And the other thing that was cool for this mix that helped out was my tape bus. So this Ampex tape recorder plug-in emulation by UA is great. A lot of folks use it right on the two bus. I find that sometimes it, it saturates too much or it's too analog-y sounding and I want more clarity. So I put it on a side chain and I've been using it like that for a while. Then the vocal side chain, lead vocal side chain 1176, these are standard things I use, the Abbey Road TG. Then my Billy Decker for backgrounds and my Fairchild for background vocals, kick and snare drum crushed. And I have my bass and kick glue. Then the Billy Decker bass side chain. Then I have one from my drum shells, which is my distressor and a bass sub. And then my guitar side chain. I ended up putting everything through those, backing things down from where I normally would have them, then bringing them up to a level where I thought it was cool. And when everything was great, which didn't take really very long, then I went in and I started looking at individual tracks. So what was really cool is he had a lot of different effects that he dialed in the way he wanted them, like this nice long plate, which he already pre-EQ'd. And I put Soothe after it to take out some harshness. And it was all automated, so it was done. My work was done on that. And he had this combo of, uh, he had Echo Boy that was EQ'd for a certain delay throw for certain things on the vocals, which I put Soothe on. And then I added this Aphex Oral Exciter. Gives it some air without making it, apparently making the whole track feel brighter. So I used that to send some of the really nice airy backgrounds too. Then he had a big delay verb where he had a delay feeding into this verb, which gave it a really nice, like a quarter note pre-delay. And then my aux submasters, uh, pretty much with the same as I have in other videos you've seen. I have Soothe on the lead vocal. I have the Pro Q. I have the Manly Elop hardware backgrounds were the phoenix pro q soothe my favorite ssl channel by brainworks and my favorite sound toys wearing this the sound toy swag today thank you ken and, and everybody there SIEQ, which i really love the 4.5 and the 2.3 band and the high band whatever that is they're great vocal intro is a little different so that was treated different so SC is uh, Stanley Clark's bass. I'm a fan. I've seen him many times in the past. I'm old, so I've seen him solo, Return of Forever. He's fantastic. So I was just pretty much happy to hear him play. So I just didn't want to mess it up. So I fattened it up a little bit. Add a little of that to make it blend in. Then I had this EQ that turned on and off in different points. Really clean, nice EQ, this Brainworks 1998. Then he had an intro uh, where he played Bode you know, Arco, or Bode Upright. So that comes in over here, it turns on the EQ. So in the beginning it's on and later it's off. So you see some automation things move there. Then there was a Moog bass. And then down the line, it's pretty much standard stuff, nothing out of the ordinary. So that's our quick overview of feel. Thanks again for watching, please subscribe. We appreciate your support and hit the notification bell so we can let you know when more content like this is coming. Next up, we're gonna cover the loops and drums. See you then.